Afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our second thoughts on Thursday. Um, really good chance for the GrowthWorks Network to get together once a week and discuss industry hot topics. Going kind to of come out of those small group mentoring sessions where we're diving into industry specifics and actually come back and, and chat about an issue that affects us all. Um, this is one I've been really looking forward to because I think whether we're team members and thinking about our peers or we're team leaders and thinking about the business around us, I think we all know that our, our staff engagement is going to be absolutely critical as we think about you know, bringing people back from furlough, getting our hotels open again. Um, you know, we know that helping our staff be successful is our number one goal. What's that going to look like in a world that's you know, completely different to what we were seeing you know, just, a, just a few short months ago? So to kind of provoke our thinking and, and share some really good examples, it seemed pretty natural we bring in um, Craig from Belmont. So Belmont, for those of you that don't know, is a luxury hotel chain, world renowned for staff loyalty, for staff engagement and, and low turnover. Craig himself had a phenomenal career coming up through Weston and McDonald and Fairmont, the Glen Eagles, and of course now, now Belmont. So you know, wide experience of the way a range of chains handle this kind of thing. Um, and, and I think we'll leave us some kind of top tips on, on how to um, move, things, move things forward. So I will um, quickly turn over to Craig now. Uh, and Craig, you're welcome to unmute yourself. Um, and yeah, really looking forward to the discussion. And if you have any questions, please just leave them in the chat and we'll, we'll kick off with our discussion afterwards. But in the meantime, Craig, over, over to you. So James, thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the, the opportunity to talk to you today on uh, such a vital topic. Um, as you know, my name's Craig and uh, I have the, the privilege to be general manager of the British Pullman. Uh, which is part of the Belmont Trains and Cruises division. Um, I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about some of the tools that my team and I are using to navigate uh, this uh, unprecedented, unprecedented challenge and some of the core principles which are guiding the uh, decisions we're making as we move forward. Um, colleague engagement is something which is hugely important to me and also to Belmont globally. As James uh, noted there, we do have some of the strongest metrics within global hospitality uh, including when it comes to engagement uh, and my own business consistently delivers uh, colleague engagement scores in the 90th percentile. Uh, within the normal run of operations it's challenging enough to maintain and build on this base and it's only more challenging to continue to build engagement through adversity. I very much believe however that this will be key to not only successfully resuming our operations but also in adapting to the new operating conditions uh, in the most effective way. So let me uh, let me dive right into the slides and we will begin. So guys, um, I'm going to start off by talking a little bit about uh, about the Belmont British Pullman family, which is which is sort of my family group. Um, we are uh, very blessed that we do have across uh, across the whole of Belmont uh, incredibly good staff retention and very long length of service. Um, I'm going to touch just on the stewarding team, uh, which is our front of house. Uh, imagine our stewards kind of like head waiters. Each one is responsible for a carriage. Uh, and the service within. Um, so I have 12 uh, team players uh, in this particular job role and they have uh, a combined 181 years of service with Belmont. So it really is extraordinary uh, from our, our longest serving steward who's been with us for 45 years um, to obviously a couple of new ones who, who have come in uh, due mainly to, to retirement and, and people uh, hanging up their spurs. So what, what does that mean? That means that we have a team of people whose life is focused around the business that we operate. Um, my, my longest serving steward who I referenced, Michael, his son is a chief steward on board the Belmont British Pullman, Thomas. Thomas's uncle is a lead steward who runs another carriage uh, further down the train. Tom's younger brother, Harry, comes in occasionally and helps us uh, as a casual, casual team player during the summer months. Um, so our business, our operation, is an extension of their uh, social circle, their family operation, uh, and therefore their support structure um, that helps them to learn, develop and, and get through day to day. So one, one of the interesting things about the current situation is it, it hasn't just withdrawn the ability of our team players to operate and work, it's withdrawn their ability to socialize and to network within a normal, uh, normal dynamic. So you could take, for example, uh, one of my stewards who is younger, he's unmarried, uh, lives alone, um, is very, very close with certain other waiters on board the train. 
So in the normal run of operations, he's seeing these people every day, day in, day out, uh, getting to talk about issues, challenges that, that he has within and, and without the working environment. Um, and on top of that, also interacting with hundreds of guests uh, on a weekly basis and having that real sort of human contact. Uh, and one of, the, you know, one of the really terrible things about this situation is that we have withdrawn that entire emotional support structure uh, from our team players. And I, I strongly believe that it's incumbent upon us and leaders at all levels of our organization to make sure that we do as much as possible to, to offset uh, any particular damage which is being caused by that. So what are the impacts? Um, here in the UK, we know that there are upwards of 9 million people um, currently taking advantage of the government furlough system uh, it is a monumental waste of productivity we have you know people sitting around at home being effectively paid by the government and to a certain extent by their companies uh, to do nothing so what can we do and what should we do to make sure that that is not the situation and that we are supporting our team players team players not just in their emotional well-being um, but in their ability to continue to learn and develop and ultimately to ensure that when they do come back into our operations uh, and when we are uh, restarting our businesses, that they are ready, they're sharp, and they understand what the needs are going to be as we move forward. So with that in mind, uh, we at Belmont have a, a certain uh, group of core principles which guide us in everything we do. Now, these principles were uh, initially launched uh, with our guests in mind, and they're about the way that we treat, the way we interact uh, with our guests. But to me, they're equally valid to the way that we interact with our team players um, globally and locally within our, our businesses. Uh, and those guiding principles are care, confidence, curiosity, and community. So what does that mean to us? And what does that mean in the real world of how we're navigating uh, the COVID scenario? So in terms of care, I cannot overstate the importance of, of taking time um, to reach out personally to members of your team. Uh, now, some of you will have uh, divisions who, uh, where you have, you know, upwards of 100, 200, possibly more team players. Uh, clearly, it's not, it's not possible at all levels for you to personally interact with every employee um, in, your, in your division, in your business. However, it is important that someone needs to do so. If it is not you, then that responsibility needs to be delegated to uh, line managers for these teams. And you need to ensure that this is happening. Uh, personally, I'm taking you know, time uh, at the start and at the end of, of every day, uh, which I'm allocating just purely to communication in this format uh, with my line managers and with various members of my team. Um, I can't speak with everyone on a, a weekly basis, so I, begin, I began the process by prioritizing uh, those team players who I knew would need the most contact. So either the longest serving team players uh, who had really given a, a lot to the business, or the opposite side of that, some of the newer team players who would be uh, you know, newer into the industry and who would be more concerned and more worried uh, about what furlough was and what it meant to them. Um, you need to make sure that you're offering support uh, as and when required. Uh, a lot of us, and you know, myself, I feel very lucky that I'm continuing to work through the furlough situation. And in fact, I'm, I'm incredibly busy. You know, we're looking uh, at all the aspects of reopening the business and, and keeping it going. Uh, that means that I continue to feel valued and important to my business. Now, I think about my team players who are on furlough and how that must look and feel to them, because this decision was not taken because they do not have value to the business. It was not taken because we do not feel they have the abilities necessary uh, to function in this situation or, or in any situation. Um, it was taken simply because there is a global situation out with our control and our business needed to adapt um, to that situation. However, if you're a young waiter, a young bartender, uh, a young housekeeper within your organization, we're suddenly sitting home uh, week after week um, and not really understanding you know, what the wider picture is of the business and what your future looks like. It's important that people who have more experience are there to help and to guide and support them. And the final point of this is you need to make sure your team know where to go for help and advice. Uh, there is an incredible amount of mental pressure and psychological pressure that's coming out of this situation. Uh, I read a, a government study that was fairly well publicized a, a couple of weeks ago, 
uh, noted that about 50% of the UK population um, regarded themselves as being highly stressed. Uh, you know, some of us may well be, uh, may fall within that bracket. But what do you do when you feel in that situation? Uh, you know, hospitality for me has always been an environment where people feel they need to be strong, they need to always project uh, the ability to, to go to work and to get the work done. So make sure that your teams know if they are feeling under pressure, if they're feeling stressed, if they're feeling depressed, maybe they don't feel comfortable to talk to you or to their line manager, um, but you need to make sure that they do know where to go, where they can get uh, help and advice in the situation. So the next of, of the core competencies for us is, is confidence. Um, for me, the most important thing is have the confidence with your team to be proactive. Don't be scared to reach out to people just for a conversation and, and see how they're doing. You know, it's very important to, uh, to us as we project forward and we look at the way our business is going to look in the future, that we are sharing as much of this development as possible with our teams. They need to know that we're working towards an end goal of resuming operations, and they need to know what that is gonna look like uh, when they come back to work and, and what differences, changes to their operating environment are gonna be uh, incumbent uh, upon them as part of this uh, new reality. Um, you should actively be looking for opportunities to, to assist. Uh, if you have a team player who you know uh, in the normal run of business is someone who comes to you a lot asking for help, asking for guidance, uh, and they've suddenly gone very quiet, there's probably a reason behind that. Uh, and it's, again, an opportunity for you to reach out to them and to be proactive and see, you know, how are things? How's your wife? How's your family? You know, perhaps their, their spouse or their loved one has lost a job. Um, you know, perhaps there's a, another scenario they're struggling with the kids at home, you know, and, and sometimes just having someone to talk to uh, can, can make a very, very big difference in, in the situation. Um, honesty, as you know, is always the best policy. I try very hard in this situation, as I do always, to be as honest as possible with my team. I'm not going to promise them that the train's going to be running next week, next month, uh, because I do not know that for a fact. I'm not gonna make any commitments to them that I cannot back up with hard reality. Uh, but what I will promise them and what I will be honest about is that uh, when we make a decision for the business, such as we're suspending for another week or you know, perhaps we're canceling a, a couple of journeys in the future or we're making adaptations to the way that they'll work, I'll share that with them immediately and I will be completely upfront uh, about it. Uh, and one of the great things about that is it, it if you have confidence in your team and if you show confidence to your team, it gives them the confidence to come back to you and to share thoughts, ideas, strategies that, that they may have about ways that we can grow and adapt our operation as we, we move forward. Um, and to be honest, you know, I'm, I'm a general manager. I'm a generalist in my business, um, but I'm very proud of the fact that I have experts at every point of the chain um, and I need to be listening to them uh, as we make a plan uh, to move forward for the future. So the, the third, uh, and the one that is almost the most fun and, and the most engaging in the situation is curiosity. What are your team players doing while they're furloughed, while they're stood down, while they're not actively working within the business? Um, and it's vital for me that we make sure that we are not losing week after week, month after month of productivity uh, for our teams. So I'm encouraging everyone within the business to stay curious. You know, what are they doing? Um, yes, there's a caveat at the bottom of the page in bold type saying, you know, we cannot ask our team players to carry out any work on behalf of the company while they're furloughed. Uh, different companies have different legal restrictions and obviously you must adhere to those, but within what is possible, what are you doing to encourage your team to stay active and to keep their minds sharp? Do they know what's available out there? Um, one of the first things we did when it became apparent that we would be suspending operations, was to share links across the business of uh, open university courses, of particular uh, videos of interest on YouTube, um, particular uh, free to use courses that are out there, whether it's on Excel skills or you know, advanced Google uh, skills or anything that may be relevant to our teams. Uh, and to share a list of those out across the team so that they were there for them to use uh, if they chose to do so. Uh, we, we worked quite quickly to create a, an environment, a kind of fun environment around this. So, you know, we encouraged our team to compete with each other uh, in ways of, you know, what are they doing? Are they 
embrace the opportunities in their community to get involved? Uh, are they, um, you know, doing something as simple as, as reading a book, uh, which might be relevant to to their careers or to their interests? You know, are they uh, going out for a nice bottle of chilled rosé wine on a beautiful summer's afternoon and talking to the rest of the team about what that wine was like and, and how it was for them? Um, one example that, that I have uh, for us, which has been very successful, is a, a bookshare program um, where we've, uh, from week to week, picked a, a particular book and, and any team player can, can nominate these. Uh, the one I'm reading right now, right here next to me, is called Around the World in 80 Trains. Um, and, you know, there's a few people uh, within the team who are currently reading this book. And at the end of the week, you know, we get together on a, a little Zoom call. We talk about, uh, you know, what it was like, about the, the things in the book that really kind of appealed to us or were important to us. And it just helps to create that shared sense of community and curiosity. Uh, and it helps that, you know, the book's about trains um, and actually features uh, one of our trains uh, in the book as well. So, you know, it's, it's helping in some way to develop the team's uh, professional um, abilities and knowledge of product, but it's also in a, a kind of fun and, and interactive way, and it helps to start a conversation when we when we talk and get together. So the the final point for us um, is community, and it, it's something which, you know, if there's if there's any one thing that this COVID uh, crisis has shown us, it's that we do have a very strong sense of community within this country, and people are willing to get out there and, and to help each other. All of our teams, because we work in hospitality, are, you know, we are people who like to engage. We like to help others. We like others to feel comfortable and happy. And we have a, an opportunity now to make sure that we continue to do this. One of the first things we did uh, with Belmont British Pullman was look at the operating stock that we were holding, um, which would not be used, any use to us, you know, fresh produce. Uh, we dated all of the beverages we had in our, in our central stores. Um, we looked at anything that would not last the pace on a week to week, month to month basis. Uh, so we have known as we've moved forward from mid-March to today, uh, on any, at any given time, okay, we need to be moving this stock on, we need to be doing something with it. So we started with our, our fresh produce uh, and we worked with um, sort of age concern, we worked with Wandsworth Council uh, around our depot to start to get these fresh ingredients out before they spoiled in our stores. Then we moved on to the frozen produce. Uh, then we started looking at soft drinks, products which were reaching uh, you know, their, their shelf life, their expiry date, um, which has allowed us to continually be pushing resources out into the community to support people uh, who've needed these resources um, at this time. You know, does your business have a community engagement plan? <laughs> on, a, on a smaller level, do your team players feel empowered to do things in, in their community? Um, I have uh, one of my line managers and, and someone who's very senior in the world of Belmont, uh, who's actually baking bread uh, every day um, for his community uh, and handing out free bread, you know, uh, around the area. Uh, and that filters down through everyone in my team. You know, I have people who are supporting uh, elderly, vulnerable uh, neighbours within their own community. I have people that are volunteering uh, to help, you know, package or distribute um, food. Uh, welfare supplies, uh, and I make sure that you know when I when I am aware of this, that I'm reaching out to those people and showing them that this is important uh, to us, to our business, and that we're very proud of what they're doing um, during this during this time. So, as I uh, promised, I'm, I wasn't going to make it uh, too much of a, a lengthy uh, presentation. I really want just to stimulate and start the conversation. Uh, I'm wrapping up with a, a little comment from one of my favourite poets. Uh, Emerson, because my, my train, uh, you know, we're considered to be the golden age of travel. We're in 1920s train and, and everything we do is evocative of the golden age. And this, this statement kind of encapsulates the way that my team and I uh, are interacting and the way that we're looking forward to the future. We are staying engaged with our business and we are being honest with each other and with our challenges so that we can make sure that when we move forward, and we will reopen uh, and we will operate again, that they are in the best possible position, emotionally, psychologically, and professionally, to meet the new challenges that we're going to have uh, for the future. 